literally the GameStop is nothing but like te- like adults and teenagers <laughs> by, around my age. And there was one kid. Yep. <laughs> one little kid. And I was always like, wow, the meme is true. The meme, uh, it is. I mean, the people who play Pokemon, like. But I always say, because the best part, the most, well, I don't, I won't say best part, because this was kind of messed up in hindsight, but Grand Theft Auto V came out shortly around the same time. (laughs) Yep. And I decided to go pick it up, because I was curious. Yep. I go into the GameStop, and it's literally nothing but kids. Yep. (laughs) And I was like, I was like, this is messed up in so many levels. Why, why weren't you at the Pokemon? (laughs) Yeah, I know. That's hilarious. And I, I remember too, because like the uh, the manager of that game stuff at the time, like really did not want to, because this kid couldn't have been more than like five. Yep. But the the manager at the store really did not want to sell sell this game to this parent, and he was he kept going like this is not for kids, like it's incredibly inappropriate in many ways. And I always remember because the I was behind I was behind them in line. And um, I usually don't, I don't ever get involved because it's like, it's none of my business. Mm-hmm. But the, the lady literally trying to make a point with the guy turns around and goes, you played these games as a kid, didn't you? You could understand, right? And I looked her in the face and just went, my parents didn't let me play these things. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and her entire point got destroyed right yeah. there. And she she just went dead silent, turned around, and literally just kind of was like, handed the money over and basically was like, just give me the game. That's... Hey guys, and welcome back to the Gaming and Collecting Podcast. On this episode, me and Alex are going to be taking a look back on down memory lane at video game stores, including both the chains, some of the more standard stores you would think of, along with some of the more modern retro stores that have started to appear in the last couple of years, going over some of our favorite memories, um, hunting for games, and just kind of seeing the different environment, as well as interacting with the other collectors and people that we meet along the way. But anyways, guys, thank you for joining us as we discuss the games that shaped us. So, how you been? Let's just say, thank God, it's Friday. <laughs> yeah. It's just been one of those weeks, and so, that's been the vibe from everyone I've talked to. So. so, let's just say I woke up this morning, I was like wicked comfy, mm-hmm. ready to go back to sleep, and I was like, ah, Saturday morning. <laughs> then my oh, alarm no. went off, my alarm oh. went off, and I looked over and I went, Shit. <laughs> it's Friday. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I it was like, you know, one of those moments when you were so comfy and you're like, I don't want to do anything. I just want to lay here and do nothing. Yeah, I am so comfortable. Nothing can ruin my day except da da. Except except the inevitable <laughs> truth. Yelp that it was Friday. Yeah, Sorry. it doesn't help too that like every day this week I thought it was a, it, I thought it was like a day earlier than it actually a day yeah. later than it actually was. No, I mean like everyone I talked to kind of felt the same. Like everyone was just like, oh, it's it's Thursday, and then they're like, I thought it was Friday. And everyone was that was the vibe all week. Yeah. <laughs> no, it didn't help too that like this today ended up being a massive, freaking disaster, but. Oh, at work? Uh, yeah, I had a, a job I'm running. I work in, like, the uh, machining field, and I do, like, medical stuff. So I was running a job, and I ended up getting a piece that ended up being bad. Oh. So I didn't know when it started, and I'd already pretty much run the majority of the job, so I had to 100% the entire order. Oh. Yeah, so I spent most of the... And you know what the worst part is? I didn't find another one. Oh. Yeah. That sucks. Uh, plus, I had a massive stomach ache all day. It was just a miserable yeah, day. Yeah, so did I. I don't know why, but I also, like, I have stomach ache all day. And then it didn't help because I ordered food and I ordered Chinese food because... Well, that's your problem. I had yeah. a pizza for dinner because I didn't well, eat anything else today because I had no time to eat. <laughs> well, I didn't eat anything else today either. But the reason I got it was because I got rice. Because I can eat rice with my my busted front tooth. So I don't want to 
break anymore, and rice is not an intense food, so. (laughs) I ate your mortal enemy today, so. Yeah, I know, pizza betrayed me, I'm very upset about it. I'm so upset, it betrayed my tooth. Mm. It betrayed me. For this episode, I'm actually drinking... Ranch water? No, no, I have some of that, but not today. I'm drinking oh. sparkling ice spiked hard seltzer. Ooh. Ruby fizz. It's Ooh. only 80 calories. Oh, how is That's... it? Eh. It's... It's not bad, it's just kind of... It, it, you know what, it, it tastes like sparkling water. Oh. Oh. Are you sure it's but alcoholic it... then? Yeah, because I had I had bought a case of these last week, and I drank like I drank like seven of them, and I got fucked up. But yep. Oh, huh. well. I mean, hey, that means it's it's working. Well, they they're a little bit too smooth. That's the big only problem with them. Ah, so you can drink a lot and not realize it. Yeah, yep. like a, well, I mean, I had a reason last week, and I won't get into. But yeah, I, I was I was very drunk last weekend. Oh god! Oh god! There's a reason we didn't record. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, today I am drinking water from my Brita filter because I haven't gone to the liquor store in, I think, well, I haven't bought alcohol since you were at my apartment because oh. it's just a lot of work. Like, Luckily in Connecticut, I could buy it at the grocery store, but that means like I don't, I can't do self checkout, and it's just like, uh. And I've been meaning to stop at the liquor store sometime this week, but I just like, because this week's been so, uh, I just like don't want to stop on my way home if I don't have to. So. Yeah. Yep. And it's I funny. Thought, oh. Hmm. Oh, you were saying. Uh, Oh, I was saying, I thought I, I thought I still had some of those um, Trulies that I had before, but uh, I guess I drank them all. So, all I have is water today, but that's okay, because I'm pretty tired, and honestly, I'm going to go to bed after we record the podcast, because I'm yep. really tired. Uh, the other than that, I went out and did some errands after work today. I had to grab, um, uh, it's Father's Day this weekend, so I had to get a card for Dad. Yes. And Happy Father's Day, Father! If you're was, listening to this, well, I, while I was in Target, I, I like to walk through the uh, DVD section. Yes, and as what did you do. You find? And I, so Target has anime has an anime section now. Huh. Anything so, good? I found uh, Paranoia Agent. Paranoia that was, uh, Agent. That was um, Satoshi Khan's uh, anime series. He did. Huh. It was like a 13 episode thing, but now I have all this Satoshi Khan uh, stuff. So Nice. I haven't Saw watched that, it. Hmm? I've been too bit bu- I haven't watched it. I've been too busy. Well, you 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 just haven't really watched any Satoshi Khan stuff. <laughs> yeah. Cuz I'm too busy. <laughs> yeah, watching One Piece for the 5000th time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rewatching The Fishman Island arc. <laughs> it's just so good. Uh you, yeah. you'll, you'd get it if you watched it, okay? Yeah. Well, ironically, that indirectly kind of brings us into our topic for today's episode. Yes. So, for this episode, we're actually going to be talking about uh, game stores over yeah. the years. And I, I kind of find this topic fascinating because game stores have certainly evolved, like, quite a bit since... We were so we were born in like the mid '90s, so we we kind of got to see the peak, uh, like the the very early beginnings of game stores, and probably around their absolute peak before they kind of went down to a yep. degree. Before they eventually would get overtaken by the retro game stores, which we'll get into towards the end of the podcast. But I'd like to say, do you remember? probably the first time we ever went to like Toys R Us I don't remember the first time but I definitely remember going But you remember many... like the early days back when we were still like in preschool Oh yeah no like and it was just like a, a world of toys and to- toys and toys and Yeah toys. this is back when like Toys R Us was like you were going into this like massive like 
It was a magical wonderland. Like, it's so tiny now, but you back then, you were so, everything was huge. Well, also, Toys R Us is uh, closed now. Kinda. I think they, they had a revival, sort of. Maybe? I don't. I think they only do online now. Yeah, like, I don't know. It was something weird like that. But all but their, all, I believe all their stores. The original, actually the original closed. chain stores are definitely gone. I know that. I think they still are like alive in either, maybe Canada or like I, Europe. But I don't so, think they they don't have any stores in the United States anymore. Yeah, I know the one that we went to, we went to all the time is gone. The building's yeah. still there, but it's oh. gone. Funny story, off topic, but I remember I was watching, um, I don't know, at one point, I just started deep diving into people, like, exploring abandoned places, and... Oh, did you watch that abandoned series on YouTube? Yeah, uh, sometimes, yeah, I dabble in it, because sometimes it's just interesting when they, like, go into, like, these abandoned, like, mental hospitals, or just, like, abandoned, like, hotels and stuff, and it's just interesting to see them, like, rot away and decay, but, um... I just find it fascinating. But one one time I was I was dabbling and then it was a Toys R Us and then I looked at the Toys R Us and I looked at where the video was taken. I was like, That's our Toys R Us Oh, was it really? Yeah, no, someone broke into it. Oh, I'm gonna and did like the whole video. Yeah, so um Yeah, I sorry that was off topic, but I just no, it, it, I just remembered it and I was just like, Oh my god, that that was our Toys R Us. Yeah. And someone did so, a video. So it's kind of funny, but a lot of the the, sh- the stores we're going to bring up on this uh, this deep look toward look to the past, um, a lot of them don't exist anymore, which is kind of sad. Yeah. But yeah, Toys R Us that was probably the first major one I can remember. Mm. And what what made Toys R Us so interesting was the layout of that store changed a lot. Oh yeah. Now. Toys R Us always kind of had this one dedicated, like, game section. Mm-hmm. Like, it was always kind of off in its own corner. I think it was, like, the Toys R Us, like, game zone or something. Yeah. And but I remember also... everything was, like, locked away, right? Like, everything was, yeah. like, locked behind well, stuff. Well, it was kind of like, there to... was, like, the certain stuff was locked behind stuff, but then there was also, like, other, like, the kind of in-between racks and stuff. It was... <laughs> It was basically just kind of like a mini game store within Toys R Us. Yeah. But what was interesting was, I remember because, like, you'd like to look at, like, the Barbie dolls all the time. Yeah. As, as girls of I was a did. young child. But um, like I remember because right by the Barbie doll section, there was... Because it was next to the B- Barbie dolls and the bikes, there was this, like, kiosk, which was, like, a giant TV screen mm-hmm. connected to this, like... Like uh, kind of like it was like a membrane keyboard, mm-hmm. and basically it just had a bunch of games on it, and you push the the you click on the games icon on it, and it would just show you trailers of the game. Huh. And I remember I, I just kind of like when you and mom were do like looking at whatever you wanted to look at, I just spend like minutes <laughs> upon minutes just watching these different trailers on this thing. Oh wow. And I always remember it because it was like in the middle of nowhere, like not even close to the games. Mm-hmm. Huh. But I, I remember don't at, remember that. No, well, because you, you you weren't ever at it. You were, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. So I I do that, and then we'd always kind of go over to the game section. Of course, back then that was when game games were a, a very rare rare treat because they were kind of expensive. Oh yeah, very so, expensive. So the, this was like circa like we had the PlayStation. No, no, actually, no. We I don't. Yeah, yeah. We had we just had gotten the PS One to share, but the and then Game we Boy. We had Game Boys, right? We had Game, Game Boy Colors. Those were our primary systems. Yep. And I remember because that was basically all we could get for a while there. Yep. And I remember like my biggest thing I got from that Toys R Us back then was Wario Land Three. Huh. That's funny. Which I remember still thinking was like the greatest, greatest, it was like the greatest day ever. Basically, yep. it was like, yes, a brand new game. And unfortunately, Wario Land 3, for like a five to six year old, is not an easy game because it's like a puzzle platform. No. And I never got very far. No. Nope. But it kept me interested, that's for sure. Yeah. But yeah, so that GameStop was interesting because I always remember it, it, 
uh, not GameStop. I'm sorry. That Toys R Us was interesting because it kind of like evolved over time. Oh yeah. Well, I they... think it kind of evolved as toys changed and kids like interests changed, so it just kind of kept up with the times, I guess. But what was funny was the game spot over in the corner, like the game zone, mm-hmm. always seemed to be kind of stuck in time. Oh like, yeah. It, they just kind of changed up the systems and like everything kind of it would just kind of update but it wouldn't actually it, it kind of was weird because it felt like its own little world inside the toys r us yeah. i don't know if this was just our toys r us but if anyone if anyone remembers leave a comment or something but mm. but i what i always found fascinating too was like toys toys r us was a, always a kids focused store yeah but you could still get like m-rated video games there what yeah because we that's where we got dad grand theft auto 3 <laughs> Dead Grand Theft Auto <laughs> at, at Toys R Us. What? It Who was either Grand, that? It, it was it was either Grand Theft Auto Three or GTA Vice City. I don't remember. Oh my god! But um, yeah, I remember. Th- I just remember that because it was like, because I me- I remember thinking I was getting one game and then Mom was buying that for Dad. <laughs> and it was, I remember because the the store clerk made it, which actually amazed me because the store clerk made a big deal about, just so you know, this game's not for kids, and, and mom was like, oh, it's not for him, don't worry. Yeah, <laughs> and it's the for guy, his father. <laughs> yeah, the guy was immediately, his demeanor imme- immediately changed. He was like, oh, okay, <laughs> like immediately changed. <laughs> and I was like, wow, <laughs> what a different time. I know, now like people won't even question it at this point. Well, some will, like the decent, the decent employees will, others yeah. But also, I've read some of those, like, tales from retail stories where, like, some people, like, they'll look at the lady and they'll be like, if I say something, this is going to be a Karen. So I'm just going to let her buy it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because that well, is unfor- society. That's unfortunately just how it is, but... Yeah, so that was Toys R Us. That yep. was probably, like, the first real... In my early video game years, that was probably the first real time just seeing a lot of video games in one place. Yes. And at that time, I was still under the impression that PlayStation was all that existed. (laughs) Because it was funny, because I remember PlayStation, and I remember N64. Mm -hmm. But I don't recollect Saturn at all. No, I don't ever remember hearing about that. Well, it's funny because I don't remember seeing those cases either. So, and this was like late '90s, so I th- I think Dreamcast was on by then. Yeah. And I'm going to assume just because Dreamcast games sort of resemble PlayStation games in shape and Maybe size. Maybe you just kind of assume. They I were. probably didn't notice. No, I. That's probably it, honestly. Yeah, because I I, I find it fascinating that I I I didn't really know I didn't learn about the Saturn until years later, like via the internet. Yep. Like, it's kind of weird how the childhood brain works. I mean, because the only reason I knew the N64 existed was because, it, for some reason in, in our area, everybody had an N64, and we were, like, the only people who had PlayStations. Yep. Which was really interesting during recess, because I did not understand what anyone was talking about, but yet I had the PlayStation with Final Fantasy VIII. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> that's, cause that's going to impress the kids. <laughs> if only they knew. If only they knew. No, they probably would have played five minutes of it and been like, this sucks. This is boring. Oh, eight. I love you so much, but god damn it, you're hard to get into. Ugh. But um, anyways, back to on topic now. Another place that we always saw games, so... This was also around the time where, like... A, mall still exists, but you also had your chain store. Like, the chain stores that are all still around, like the super centers. Mm-hmm. And... The ones in particular that I come to, come to mind are Walmart and Target. Yes. And I always remember the Walmart. So I Walmart, we always kind of like had the toy aisle because that was like mm-hmm. sort of like the distraction to keep us distracted for a few seconds. Yes. We were coming along with mom going grocery shopping and she was like, all right, let's go in the toy aisle for a little bit. Do, 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 and... But eventually I, I came to notice right next to most of the toy aisles was the electronics section. Yes. And this is where the video game walls were. Yes. And back, this is back when... I, I'm not even... I don't even think games... I don't even think they do this at, like, stores anymore. This is back when you had, like, the kiosk console. 
like with the with the controller that was connected to the case, mm-hmm. like sticking out, like the nasty controller that God knows who touched. <sighs> and the thumbsticks were always missing the rubber, and the buttons Ugh. were all like broke. Yeah, it wasn't a good time, but that was cool too because that was like. That that was another way to get dis- to to distract a child for five minutes. Just let them mess around mm. with that thing. What was yep. funny though is I remember distinctly. I don't really remember the PlayStation N sixty four in this sense. Mm-hmm. I remember the PS two, Xbox, and GameCube distinctly though. Yes, me and too. The one thing I always remember was for some reason the way the kiosk was set up at a short time, you could actually reset the console for whatever reason. Yeah. I don't know why. This was always a weird like. I guess it was, like, because you couldn't get back to... The, I think it had to do with because you couldn't get back to the menu. Oh, yeah, because there was no menu, really, on these consoles. Mm. So there was just, like... This always made me laugh. I don't know if anyone would remember this, but... They had the GameCube, the Xbox, and the PlayStation 2 all next to each other. Mm-hmm. And the GameCube and Xbox just had buttons that were, like, hardwired to the actual GameCubes to, like, activate the resets... Yep. The PS2, because of how it was designed, had this little stick that you had to kind of, like, move over and push in the reset button. Oh, really? That's yeah, it funny. was so freaking janky. Shh. But I remember that, because you, you, you basically... Those systems were just glorified, like... They must have been, like, demo units or something, because they had, like, a bunch of games just available. Oh, yeah. Or they were probably just programmed to, like, have a certain amount of games. Yeah, or they had, like, a demo disc. They had a specific demo disc in them, maybe? that could be it, too. Yeah. But I remember, like, messing around with those and then just, like, kind of always, like, staring longingly at the games. Because you knew you weren't going to get them, but you could kind of stare at them and (laughs) you never know. (laughs) Hope for Christmas. Yeah. But you you know what else I also remember? What? They had like Game Bo- the Game Boys were always like there too, and they were just kind of like attached to the case, like the controllers. Oh were. yeah, I remember that because I think you would always go for the consoles, and then I would always kind of go for whatever was left. Because <laughs> see, I always were, remember. You... I always remember. And I would go D- for like the handheld. Yeah. See, I always remember when the DS came out. The 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 uh, the in store like demo DSs were always destroyed. Oh yeah. Because because just... assholes would just go and like destroy the screen. Yeah, especially the touch screen. Yeah. It would just, like, go and, like, mess them up. And the original one, like, the touch screen, like, could get so bad. Oh, it. yeah. So, so bad. Mm. But I always remember that. And that also reminds me of my one of my favorite stories where when I was kind of curious about... When, when the seventh generation of consoles was coming out and we had... It was the big... PS3, 360, Wii. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like... You were intrigued by the 360 at first because it it came out first. Yes. And I kind of wanted to try one out at the store. Mm -hmm. So I went to the the Walmart to try it out. And the 360 in the demo kiosk had a red ring of death. Oh my god, that's hilarious. (laughs) And I remember just seeing that and thinking... Nope. I guess I want a PS3. (laughs) That's hilarious, because I bet, like, the, um, the Walmart people were just like, well, shit, what do we do? (laughs) Well, I know why, because those things were crammed into those cases, and they probably had no ventilation, so it's not a surprise. Oh, yeah. So they probably didn't think about that. Oh, sorry, everyone, I can't stop yawning. I let one out, and now I can't stop. It happens. No, but, so, if we're going back to, like... Other defunct uh, stores. Do you remember uh, KB Toys? No, I don't remember that. You don't remember KB Toys? I don't. It I was have no like recollection of that. So that was like a toy store in the mall. It was like a chain hmm. for a while. If you look up the logo. Where, you'll f- where was it in the mall? It was like around the middle-ish kind of. KB Toys. Look up the logo and you'll remember it. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, and guess what? <laughs> guess what popped up? What? Entire store on sale. <laughs> Nothing yeah. held back. Oh, I remember now. So KB... oh, I guess they had a reopening somewhere. Yeah, I think they tried to redo. They they tried bringing the name back or something. But yeah, uh, KB Toys. That was another like 
wild uh, toy store back in the day. And I always remember because you had, obviously it was kind of like every other toy store, you just had toys and stuff, but then there was also a decent game section, like most of these stores had. And it was just always a, a, a treat just to see, like, all the games. And I, what was cool about KB Toys is, too, like, they had, like, older stuff, too, that mm-hmm. they'd kind of hold on to. Like, it didn't get tossed right away. So that's, like, I always remember seeing all the N- That's, like, the N64 and PlayStation games kind of stayed there for a long time after things got uh, moved on and discontinued. Mm-hmm. But I always remember they were, they were pretty cool, too. It was funny, because back in the days of, like, malls, back when malls actually, like, were living... Yep. Like, you'd just, like, you'd come across the store, and it'd be like, oh, can we go in here? And the parents were like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, they were like, all right, we got to. Oh. It was funny, because it, like it was like a rendition. Like, we'd go from one store, and then we'd walk past the toy store, and we'd have to go in. It's actually funny. I found, um, when I was looking at the logo, I actually found a flyer from the 1980s from KB Toys mm. and it was advertising the Sega Genesis at the yep. time. Oh, uh, that's funny. Oh, KB's oh been God. around for a long time. Yeah. Well, at least they no, were. the the poster is just funny. Like I was just like, "Huh? Oh, wait, there's more." There's like one with the um NES. Oh yeah. There's one with the That's funny. They're actually one of the companies that boycotted Sega after a uh... Sega surprise dropped the Saturn on everybody. Huh. That's funny. Wow. It's funny looking at, like, retro... This is off topic, but it's interesting looking at these, like, retro ads. Oh, yeah. They're just, like, so... Well, also looking at the price, because uh, the Nintendo NES, they were advertising it as a uh, 79.99. Oof. Which... I think that's how much the NES Classic was, <laughs> I think about yeah. it. Yeah. Um... And then, like, the controllers, like, um, the, the, the Max Joystick controller mm-hmm. was nineteen ninety nine. Yep. And then, like, you look at, like, the, the Nintendo Switch Pro controller now, yeah. isn't that, like, almost a hundred bucks itself? Like, it's, it's, oh like, God. 70, I think. It's, it's, like, the same price as a PS5 yeah. game. Oh, my God. Times change, people. Wow. Yeah, that's funny, actually, like. For the price of an NES, the NES back in the day with before inflation is around the price of a freaking PS5 game these days. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Oh my god. Sorry for going off topic. No, that's but fine. I'm just, that's fascinating. I'm just reliving KB to- I just thought the um, the old flyers were just really interesting to see. Like I just thought that was really cool. Do you, do you remember fu- back in the day too how you'd find like games and stuff in like the most random places? Oh yeah. Like do you remember like Stop and we were going through Stop and Shop, but that's a like a, a grocery store up in the, this area. Oh yeah. But um, I remember we were going through Stop and Shop one day, and they just had like PS2 games on a rack, just chilling there. Uh, they were you- all like greatest hit, like va- re- like value brand ones too. I remember because we got Finding Nemo on the PlayStation 2 there. What a piece of <laughs> shit. <laughs> what a piece of shit that game was. Oh my god. Oh. But back in the day, getting a PS2 game was like the greatest thing ever, so it didn't it matter like, what it was. Oh. And then, um, I also remember we got a lot of like PC games at Staples. Because oh, yeah, Staples cause, well, used to sell yes. a ton of PC games. Oh yeah. That's where I got the Sims, uh, the Sims 1. Yeah. Like, they and, always had the the Tycoon games, and oh, they yeah. always had The Sims, and I don't even know if, I don't think they sell PC games anymore, but uh, again, also... I no haven't been really, in the Staples in freaking a decade, so... I went in one at uh, the beginning, uh, I, I don't remember when, but I went in one, and it wasn't that long ago, and I didn't see any PC games, but also, a lot of PC games, you could just buy on the Well, yeah, everything's so. downloadable. No one really buys <laughs> You right. <laughs> my Siri on my watch just went off. Oh. <laughs> it scared the shit out of me. Oh my god. I think it picked it up on the podcast. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. <laughs> oh it... my god. I don't know. <laughs> oh god. She's already broken. <laughs> oh, it's been a long week, people. <laughs> I don't know how I did that. <laughs> All she's right. listening in. She's she knows we're talking about video games and buying. Actually, 
he's an Australian male. <laughs> that's that's how I set my my Siri voice to. Okay. <laughs> no. Nah, anyway. Uh, any, anyways. <laughs> All right, turn it off. <laughs> I don't know how. I don't know how. It keeps going off, and I'm not doing anything. Uh. <laughs> okay, okay. Back. Okay. <laughs> Back so on anyways, top. game store. So around, like, the mid-2000s, like, around, like, probably, I want to say, like, 2005-ish, that's yep. when, like, kind of the shift started to happen. Yeah. Where it was kind of like all of a sudden all the small little like chains were disappearing. Mm -hmm. And then we had the introduction of a certain game store that dun, popped dun, up dun. in our Kingston Mall. Yes. Called EB Games. EB Games. EB Games. Not was not it? the one you not the one you were thinking, right? <laughs> no, that's not what I was thinking. No. We'll get <laughs> to that in a EB minute. What is EB Games? So EB Games for all intents and purposes, e EB Games was originally like a standalone store and they got purchased by GameStop. Ah. Cuz EB Games is still a thing up in Canada, I believe. Oh, oh yeah, I think I've heard that. So yeah. GameStop eventually bought them out, but for like the first few years they were still EB Games over here. Yep. And I always remember cuz the Kingston Mall had like three different EBs. They had the main EB Games, then yep. there was EB Kids, which was like a kid-focused one, and then there yep. was like this third one, and I, I don't remember if there was something specific, or I might be thinking EB of a different story. EB Adults. No. no. But I remember... Grow up. But I remember... <laughs> um, Never! No, but I, I remember EB Kids in particular, because that's... So eventually... The EB Kids was fascinating because it was like it had these like PC games, and I remember playing Thomas the Tank Engine Trouble on the Tracks. Oh, oh hell yeah! Because hell that was yeah, just there. Thomas. <laughs> but what was funny about the kids store was they had three PCs, and each one was like at a different height for the different sized children. Oh, <laughs> that's actually really smart. It's like the water fountains that I like stack. Yeah. Like so one time. But it was, it, this was, like, all, like, P kid stuff and, like, PC games, and I think it was, like, the only place where you could find, like, early childhood games before, back when those were still a thing. Yep. Wow. But, Did um, they have all, like, the Barbie games there, too, yep. I bet? Yep. Barbie games, crazy. and then all I the, uh... Maybe that's where we got all of our, like, jumpstart games. Probably. Like all of our learning games. I just remember we would go there just as a distraction every now and then, too, basically. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. anyways, guys, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Woo! And we're back. We're back. So, continuing where we left off, so EB Games made its appearance around the early to mid-2000s. Yep. And originally it had multiple stores in the Kingston Mall, but eventually they kind of consolidated into, like, the one store. Basically, the the EB Kids kind of just became yep. a standard EB. Yep. And EB Games was... So it was, like, the first, like, dedicated just-a-game store at the time. And going in there, it was like you were... As a, as a young kid, you were in heaven. Yeah. Because it was just walls every wall was nothing but games yeah the racks in the middle games. games games behind the counter games everywhere all games all the like, time it was almost unre unrecognizable to what the store is these days and this was like the but, time before like game stores sold like figures and like oh yeah stuffed in was, and like plushes and stuff like it was strictly games that was it. Mm. Like, games and game, like, strategy guides. Yes. Like, you didn't even have gift cards yet, because, like, no, there was yeah. no, uh... That wasn't a big thing then. Xbox Live was only, base, like, a basic thing. Nintendo, and then Nintendo and Sony were only sort of online. The Dreamcast was dead by this point, so that wasn't even a thing. Mm. But, 
Yeah, it was nuts. But what what I always found interesting, too, was this is around the point, too, where I started realizing there were other consoles. Yes. So I'd always kind of, like, you'd look at your PS2 stuff, and you'd be like, yeah, that's cool, but I kind of also like this GameCube stuff that I can't play. Mm-hmm. And that's when the real console envy kind of started to happen. Yeah. I think this Which is, is what, thing that... like, led you into your collecting. Because you wanted no, to play... that. that... No, that that didn't really happen till later on. Oh, well, it kind of it was like a tip top. You didn't really start made, yet, but it made you intrigued. It always made me interested in playing a GameCube. Yes. More the GameCube than the Xbox, because at the time, the only things Xbox really had that I knew of was Halo, and we weren't allowed, we wouldn't have been allowed to play. Halo, <laughs> oh yeah, so. no, it wouldn't have been a mom pick. No, but. Seeing all those GameCube games, but you know what always makes I always I get it. We were kids, so there's nothing we could do about it. Mm. But it's like I always remember seeing all those really. At the time, they were insignificant, but nowadays some of those games were like ultra rare. Oh yeah. And you just kind of you didn't have money, so you passed them up back in the day. Yep. And now you look back and you're like, God damn it! I could have spent yep. so much less on this game. I know. It, that's the problem with collecting. It's always hindsight is twenty twenty. Yep, but you were also but one of my a fa- child. <laughs> yeah, a child. But one of my favorite no. things too. Yeah. One of my favorite <laughs> things was every one of these stores also had the bargain bin that had all the previous gen games that they the store was basically trying to get rid of. Yep. And that's where we got like all those PlayStation games and stuff because mm-hmm. it was like oh they're half the price and my that's and like. It was a lot easier to convince your parents when something was like a fraction of what it, what it oh yeah the uh, the modern games were worth. I mean, it's easy to con- convince me to buy something that's half on price oh, rather yeah. than because I I've been actually looking at some uh, PS uh, what's the PS fours because mm-hmm. th- now they're going on sale so I'm like oh I should buy one now because not like I'm gonna play a PlayStation Five anytime soon. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so after that, like, that's when GameStop kind of, like, well, not GameStop, not, we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Mm. That's EB where games. EB basically, it was, it was kind of like my sanctuary whenever we went to the mall. Yes, me and mom went clothes shopping, and you went to EB Games, and we yeah. say, all right, Bill, we'll be back in an hour, entertain yourself. <laughs> no, it was usually, the only time I would ever get left in, like, EB is if you were in the store next door. Yeah. Which I think was like, I think it was a clothing store. I believe store. it was, it was, no, it was Hot Topic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was Hot Topic. The Hot Topic got, oh, my God, reminiscing that ball. It was the Hot Topic. Yep. Yep. Good but, times. So, yeah, it's funny, too, because there was an FYE across the, um, across the way, and honestly, that was probably more... The FYE was really like a window of what games, what EB slash GameStop was going to become. Yep. But what's funny is eventually. So obviously we we didn't really have internet or like any real th- way of knowing about stuff like this. But one day we just kind of went in the mall and suddenly the EB Games was gone and it was just now GameStop. Yeah. It, it wasn't and really I, announced or anything. We just went in. We no, were like, it, it oh. just. Interesting. Just one day it was suddenly GameStop. Yeah. But nothing really and changed. Like, it was no, just No, that's like, what was weird. It was just the logo. That was all that changed. Yeah. It was a logo and the employees weren't as friendly, I remember. But I was also a kid. Yeah. So, it could and have I was just probably been... Asking, I was probably asking them stupid questions, now they think about it. Yeah. And they probably were just like, oh, I don't get paid enough to deal with this little shit. <laughs> I just, for some reason, I was distinctly remembered the EB employees being super friendly and super helpful. Yeah. Well, which is weird now, because GameStop employees these days are, like, extra helpful, but... Hmm. I was also a kid, so... Yeah. Keep that in mind. But also, it could have been, like, uh, we don't know, like, it could have been once GameStop took over, things probably changed for them, they might have had new rules, they might have had new policies yeah. they had to follow, well, and they probably... There definitely were changes that happened over the years. Oh yeah, and probably like things that we didn't, you didn't necessarily know about, because you just walked in and you're like, why'd you change the sign? And they were just like, oh, a lot more changed, you little shit, get out of the store, I'm pissed! No, so I know, I never probably... actually, I never actually asked, 
why the sign changed. I was more just like, oh, well, video games. Yes. <laughs> it's still a video game so, store. It still has the things that I came for, so huzzah. Yeah. But I always remember that. But what was weird about... So, so game, GameStop kind of went down like this gradual like shift over the years, though, because then it, it, it progressively, like... PS2 got fa- would slowly phase out. GameCube was slowly phased out because yep. they brought in the Wii, PS3, and then 360 stuff. And then as the years went on, you started noticing the games got smaller and smaller. Yes. Especially in that particular store because that mall was tiny and that GameStop was extra tiny. Oh, yeah. No, it was like a little hole in the wall. Yeah. And it was always funny, though, because there was another GameStop right up the street in a different plaza that was, like, yep. twice the size of it. Yep. But I always remember, because it was, like, all the games would slowly start disappearing, and instead you just had, like, clothes racks and Yeah, they would have, like, and... t-shirts, plushies, figures. Um, figures. Pop figures now are everywhere. Pop figures in particular, but they also sometimes had, like... They didn't really have, like, any anime figures, but they did have, like, Nintendo or, like, PlayStation-branded figures. And just, like, merchandise and stuff. Mm. And they slowly become became more of a just kind of nerd store than a dedicated game store. Yeah. And it was always weird because I know a lot of people like to rag on GameStop and, like, kind of cr- dump on their kind of crappy policies. And, I mean, I won't deny that they have some crappy policies. Yep. But I've never actually had a bad experience at a GameStop. No, I haven't no. either. I've always had pleasant interactions. Yeah, the the employees are always pleasant. It's like, as long as you're not a dipshit, I mean, they're not gonna, yeah, they're not gonna like ignore you. Yeah, if you have a question, they'll help you. Like, yeah, they're always helpful. I mean, it's like, yeah. don't act like they're always trying to scam you because they're not. It's especially, they're just doing their job. Especially like to like uh, people who say they're trying to scam you, like. They, like, it's like any job. You have to listen to your boss, and you have to listen to your company. Like, you don't, like, as the employee, you don't get to make any big changes. That's up to the higher-up. So, don't go complaining to, like, the retail person, because they, they don't have a choice. They have to follow whatever the company says. Yes. It's not up to them. So, stop being a Karen, and stop complaining. Yeah. <laughs> no. Nah. But, it, you know, over the years with GameStop, I did have some pretty fun memories, though. Like, I'll always remember... One I'll, one that I will always remember is... Obviously, my GameCube story. Yes. Where I got the GameCube for, like... Barely anything, because... <laughs> they thought it was broken. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious! Like, no, they they were gonna throw it away, and I, I paid, like, five bucks for it. And they, they were like, yeah, whatever. And then I came home, plugged it in, it worked fine. <laughs> that's hilarious. I don't know. That must have just, that it must have just slipped by them. Or maybe they mistook it for another one that was actually broken. And... I think they just didn't plug the cord in all the way. Yeah. Huh. I don't know. But anyways, yeah, there was that one. My absolute favorite, though, will always be the Pokemon X, like, um, launch day. Yep. Because I remember going in, because it launched, like, early, we had, I didn't have to work that day. Mm-hmm. I think it was a holiday. And I remember getting up and going to the GameStop the second it opened. Because they didn't do a midnight release, they just kind of did an early release. Yep. So I remember walking in there, and literally the GameStop is nothing but, like, te- like adults and teenagers <laughs> by, around my age. And there was one kid. Yep. <laughs> one little kid. And I was always like, wow, the meme is true. The meme, uh, it is! I mean, the people who play Pokemon, like... But they, I always say, because the best part, the most, well, I don't... I won't say best part because this was kind of messed up in hindsight, but Grand Theft Auto V came out shortly around the same time. <laughs> yep. And I decided to go pick it up because I was curious. Yep. I go into the GameStop and it's literally nothing but kids. Yep. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, this is messed up in yeah. so many levels. Why? Why weren't you at the Pokemon? <laughs> yeah, I know. That's hilarious. And I, I remember too because like the uh, the manager of that GameStop at the time like really did not want to. Because this kid couldn't have been more than, like, five. Yep. But the the manager at the store really did not want to sell sell this game to this parent. And he was he kept going, like, this is not for kids. Like, it's incredibly inappropriate in many ways. And I always remember because I, I was behind them in line. And um, 
I, I usually don't, I don't ever get involved because it's like, it's none of my business. Mm -hmm. But the, the lady literally trying to make a point with the guy turns around and goes, you played these games as a kid, didn't you? You could understand, right? And I looked her in the face and just went, my parents didn't let me play these things. Games? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and her entire point got destroyed right yeah. there and she she just went dead silent turned around and literally just kind of was like handed the money over and basically was like just give me the game that's so funny i was like i mean what I get was to the she counter, expecting I'm like <laughs> i know it's just it was funny it was like out of all the people she could have asked yeah because there was other people my age in the store too she probably could have asked them and got the yeah. answer she was looking for she just happened to ask the one person that was not going to give her the answer she wanted well also i definitely feel like whoever answered her would have like even if they had played it as a kid i feel like they would have just started like trolling and would have just been like no way in hell like, did i ever play that game like i feel like I, anyone would have just messed with her because the situation was ridiculous especially if oh, the yeah. kid was like five like jesus christ like that's a lot for a five-year-old to take in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially because I, I played the game that night, and I the first cutscene, I was like, okay, <laughs> yeah, that man, that man, I was actually friends with that manager, but I was like, he had a point. He had, he had a point, and the lady didn't listen, so. No, well, none of them did. Hope that kid is doing I, all was, right. <laughs> I, I, I guarantee he was just frustrated because he had probably sold God knows how many copies to different kids. Yep, it was day. just well, to not, not to kids, to the parents. Well, yeah, who were giving to the them to kids. Who were giving them to kids? Oh, that's crazy. I know it was just like, damn. Yeah. But I always remember that one. Like there was a ton of great memories from GameStop, even though mm. it's kind of slowed down considerably nowadays. Now I kind of go in. I don't go to GameStop to buy games. I go to GameStop to if I need a game, but also because there's people there I just I enjoy speed talking about games with. Mm. Yeah. And that's really part of the experience. Yeah. And going off of that, that kind of moves on to um, the next portion of this, of the the retro seat, the retro revival, like the retro store yeah. revival. So it, it was had to have been around like the <laughs> late 2010s. Probably, I'd have to say probably 2016-ish. Yep. Is when I started noticing like dedicated game stores, mm -hmm. like just popping up, like independent, like mom and pop stores. Yeah. And I always remember because this was long after I was already like wicked deep into uh, retro game collecting. Mm -hmm. And I always remember like we were walking through our, our local mall, which amazingly is still there, by the way. Yeah, I'm still so I'm really surprised it made it through the pandemic. Yeah, I know, especially because the two the two surrounding it got demolished, but yeah. that's beside the point. But um, yeah, so I was we we were walking through the mall one day around like twenty seventeen, I want to say, mm -hmm. and we all of a sudden just see a building kiosk because they had a, it was a store that was not yet opened, but they had the sign up, and it was J Street Video Games. Yes, and I remember seeing that and thinking, hmm. J Street, I don't know what that is, but that sounds familiar. That sounds interesting. I'm like, mm. and uh, then it, it clicks in my head. I'm like, maybe it's a retro store. Oh. And? So I I remember going to the mall, uh, like every week I'd, I'd pop in, and it would still not be open. You know, and I'd always be like, damn. damn. And you'd kind of like walk back and forth and kind of like, it was kind of an ongoing thing for about a month as they were setting up, and I'd always walk by and just be like, nope, not open yet. Oh. Nope. Let me in. You're just clawing on the glass. Let me in. Let well, me in. I just wanted, I wanted to know what it was because I wasn't sure if it was a game, a retro store or not. Or if it was like just a regular store. Oh, yeah, or just know. a game, another a new game store trying to make it make a splash. But I remember because me and you were at the mall the day it finally opened. Yes. And we were walking by and I just saw it and I was like, I, I looked at you and I went, Alex, can we please? And you were like, Yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so I go in and immediately I see like I see SNES games and Genesis games in the wall. And you're just and like, I always say, oh. seeing those just right there out in the like on a on a shelf just in a store mm -hmm. is always fascinating to me. Yeah. Because this is a I hadn't really seen a lot of retro game stores at the time. Most of the time, the most I'd see this many retro game stores was at the flea market, like I we'd mentioned in a previous um, podcast. Mm -hmm. But. 
yeah so seeing all those i was like oh man and so i'm kind of browsing like they had just opened so they didn't they kind of had the the inventory that they were given to get started Mm -hmm. so it wasn't the most spectacular stuff but it was it was it was decent to look at yeah and then of course they have the really rare every all the common well not really common but the the not expensive stuff was all on the shelves all over the place yep but then behind the glass case and yes. on the wall in the back behind the counter, was the they had the rare stuff. games. Yeah. So I remember because the first thing I, that popped into my mind was I remember I saw Final Fantasy Tactics Black Label, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Ooh, that's super rare." I'm like, "I want that." So that was like, at the time, it was like twenty five bucks, and I was like, "Okay, that's fine." Hmm. And then I bought Xeno Saga Part One, and that was like fifty bucks. And I was like, okay, yeah. I mean, that's that. I'm like, okay, I'm paying a little, a bit, a lot of money now, but they're two really cool games. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah, and then as we're checking out, I look in the back and I see this PlayStation game sitting on the shelf, and it's like, it's got anime on the front of it, and I'm like, I wonder what that is, and I'm like, I asked if I could look at it, so he goes and grabs it, and then he pulls off the shelf this big box, like. Mm-hmm. I thought it was just like a, a double disc jewel case, but no, 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 it was a box. Yep. And lo and behold, that game was Lunar 2. <laughs> did you and buy it? I kind of like, I, well, of course I did. Yeah. <laughs> you were there with me because you were like, you were looking at me like, you're not going to seriously buy that, are you? Oh. Okay. I was like, because I was, you got the look in my, you saw the look in my face where I was immediately intrigued. Yes. And I, of course I bought it. And I was like, it just, it was fascinating, because I'd never seen a game like that before. And then, of course, that's how I discovered the Lunar series, and game working working designs, and, like, special edition PlayStation cases. Yep. So, we went home after that, and, I mean, we, we did all right. I, I did all right. I was mm. happy. Yeah. So then, it started an addiction, where basically every Friday after I got paid, I'd go to the game store. Yep. And you'd get the retro games. <laughs> yep, and... I remember this because every week they'd have more and more stuff because they were people were coming and just selling stuff. Yep. So I remember I, I stock I they had a cool they had a really cool like um system where you could like cuz they were like I they were like a small chain of like stores they all used the the same like branding. Mm-hmm. And they were all connected by like a uh, computer They were system. all connected together. Yeah. So if one store didn't have a game they could call another store and see if they had it oh nice and you could pay for the game at your store and they would ship it to you huh so i remember because one of the i I got to know the guys who worked there and we got we got decently friendly enough yep so i after i probably about the third trip there i after i had already tripled my play ps2 library and like bought a ton of gamecube stuff before that started to spike basically a ton of games i'd wanted yep I asked them if they had Lunar 1, because, you know, why not? And they didn't. It was only 50 bucks, big box and all. And so that routine basically went on for, like, five months. Yep. And then the... And then I go in one day, and they're like... I go in one day, five months later, and their response is, Hey, so get whatever you want, because we're closing. (laughs) And it was like, wait, what? Unfortunately, Bill, you were the only person supporting the store. No. (laughs) <laughs> no, that's not what happened. Oh, wasn't it that the Kikisimi, I got the, the I got the I got in, informed because I was I'm mall, friends with the guys at the, the Newbury Comics down the, the way. So they reached a point where they were successful and they were like, they basically they reached a point where they were profitable. Yeah. And because they were profitable, the mall saw this and raised their rent. Ugh. And the second they did that, they were no longer profitable. Yep. And they had to close down. Oh. That's so stupid. <laughs> I know. But what I found out through the guys, um, some of the guys at Newbury I was talking to, apparently the mall just does this all the time. Yeah. Well, Which is one of the reasons why that mall, for the life of it, can't hold a store to save its life. Yeah. Like, they either fail because no one goes, or they, they get successful, and then the mall basically forces them out. Yeah. It's crazy. But yeah, so that happened, and then... I went back to basically flea market and uh, online shopping for retro games. Yep. Until one day I discovered I really had this itch to go retro hunting, so I found this one store. It was in Boston, of all places. 
like I so I had to I planned it out on the day like I had this like long like got up like stupidly early and basically drove drove up to like Boston like through Boston up to the Winthrop area yep and it was just this one game store it was the name of the store was Sudden Impact it's still there it survived the pandemic thankfully Woo! but um yeah it, it was like this really tiny little store hidden in like this like area and I just go in and it 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 was like uh, the first time I've seen a legit game store like this in a long time. And I was like, whoa. Aww. So I, I finally, I went there and I, I was friendly enough, the owner. He was, he was a nice enough guy. Mm. And I bought, I finally got my Game Boy player. Oh, nice. The Game Boy player with the disc. Yep. Along with uh, a couple other smaller games. And, you know, I'd go back there if it wasn't like such a freaking drive. Yeah. It's like a two-hour drive, so I'm yeah. like, I, I can't justify that. Yeah, you like need like a a reason like to be in the city and then go. Yeah, that and going through Boston is just not happening. So. Yeah, no, I'm gonna take the train. Yeah, no, but anyways, so after that, then it was kind of finding game stores. After that, was kind of tough because they really hadn't opened up until one day. I randomly saw an ad on a. Facebook for a game store which was only like 40 minutes away hmm. called Bowser's Basement. Ah. And I was intrigued by the name alone. Mm -hmm. So I immediately, I, I followed them on Facebook, got the address. I, kinda, I looked at the pictures and I was like, okay, that looks like the store for me. Yep. So I, I went down on a Saturday and I immediately go in. I drive down. It, it's like this little, like, little niche place off to the side. Mm -hmm. The whole window mural is all painted up with, like, Nintendo characters and stuff. And it's, like, got this, like, wicked charm to it. Yep. And I was like, wow, that's neat. Of course, I showed up, like, ten minutes before it opened, so I was sitting in the parking lot by myself awkwardly, like, yep. well, this is weird. Because you're habitually early. Well, yeah, that's just my thing. I, I'd rather <laughs> I'd rather be early than I late. know, I know. I'm just goofing on you. <laughs> yeah. But, um... Yeah, so eventually the the store opened, and I go in, and I, I walk in, and it's just, it's games everywhere, and there's Saturn games, there's Sega CD games, every game imaginable, and I'm browsing, it's like, the owner hadn't shown up yet, it was like one of his employees uh, was working at the time, mm -hmm. so I'm just kind of looking around, and I'm like, okay, that's cool, and I'm like, I asked if I could look at some of the Saturn games, because I saw Mortal Kombat Trilogy on the wall, and I was like... I really want Mortal Kombat Trilogy. I've wanted to play that forever. And the Saturn version is, like, apparently the most interesting to me. Yep. So I, I'm looking at that. And as I'm looking at that, I look down and I notice, um... I saw... Power Stone 2. Mm -hmm. In the case for the Dreamcast. Yep. And as I'm looking at that, the owner had shown up. And um, I had asked, hey, can I look at one of the games in the Dreamcast case? And his response was, oh, is it Bangai O? <laughs> Which was a really rare game, the rarest game in the case at the time. And I was like, uh, no, 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 I, I wanted to look at um, uh, Power Stone 2. And he was like, oh, okay. He's like, <laughs> so he hands me that and I'm looking at it. And then we start talking and I'm, I'm like, getting, I get to know the guy. The owner, John, he like knows his stuff. Like, mm. nicest guy, super personable. Yeah. Like, super knowledgeable. He, uh, super knowledgeable. And the vibe of Bowser's Basement is like, you go in to buy games, but you stay or stick around and you keep coming back for the experience. Yep. So I'm like talking to him, like I'm like, okay, so I'm gonna get those two games definitely, and I also got a copy of uh, D for the Saturn because it was up there too and it wasn't super expensive. Mm -hmm. So then I'm getting ready to check out and I notice he's going through a bunch of Dreamcast games. Yep. And I immediately I see Sonic Adventure Two. Ugh. And Sonic Adventure 2, I had the disc only for the longest time, mm -hmm. and this was, like, mint in the case, and it was a really good price. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I need that one, too. So we did that, and then right before I'm checking out, I also saw Azura Dreams, which was, like, this PlayStation RPG I would never heard of before, and it was only, like, 20 bucks at the time. Mm. So I was just like, okay, I'll get that, too. Yep. So I spent those, and I left, and I was like... That was really fun. Like, I've never had yeah. that great of an experience at a store. I wasn't even there that long. Mm. So, of course, then I make the goal, I'm going back. Yeah. Because, of course, I am. It's local. Yeah. Seems like a nice place. Like, doesn't seem like it's going to randomly just disappear one day. Yep. 
So I go back again and I buy more games. Yep. And I, then again. And again. And it basically. And again and again and again. Like, <laughs> yeah. To the point to the point where my blog actually the first post on my blog was me some of my pickups from Bowser's basement. Yep. Which um, was always funny. But eventually I get to know, like, the owner. I get to know his staff. Although he, he's had lots of different staff since I've been there. Mm. But, um, yeah, so I go there for years. I took you there and you got to see the place. Yep. You remember the original store. Yes. No, I remember the original and I remember the new one. And they both are great. But I like the area of the new one better. Yes. The original was, so getting to that, the original was kind of like... The store was really nice, but it was kind of in this really, like, kind of cramped great, off, like... Yeah. Not in the greatest area, either, of town. Like, you, you'd you be driving on the main road, and then it was all of a sudden just kind of, like, a parking lot right off to the side with, like, a where like kind of like a warehouse kind of building yep. that it was in. And you'd pull right off to the side, and it was there. And the store was nice enough. Oh, yeah, no. The inside was nice. The, the outside, not even the store itself, just the outside around it was not as nice. Mm. But I love but his new I, store. His new store yeah. is great. I'm so happy for yeah, him. So, getting getting to that, basically, eventually, like I, I go there for about a year, year and a half, and by then I'm I'm a regular. I, I know, I know the every, they know me by name. I know them by name. It's <laughs> I'm the RPG guy, basically. Whatever, yep. like if he needs a RPG question, he'll ask me if I'm in the store at the time. Mm-hmm. But um. Eventually, uh, I found out he uh, he basically got did well enough that he basically he bought was getting ready to buy a, a new move to a new location. Woo! So uh, once he I found out that, and I, once I found out the day that I, I was still kept going. I mean, it was cool talking. He was showing me pictures and stuff of like the new store, and I was like, "That's cool. It's gonna be great." Mm. But um, of course, eventually, I found out what day the. Uh, the old store was closing, so of course I had to go, like, go see it one last time. Yeah. And uh, we got a good picture, me and him, uh, the owner, like, right at the front, just to, to, like, one final, like, moment, just to immortalize Aww. that store before it finally closed. Yep. Which was really neat. And then, unfortunately, pandemic hit yeah. right after he moved. Oh. Thankfully, though, he made it through it. Yeah. I'm so happy he made it through it. Because the store is great. The new store is so nice. When oh, we yeah. Went to so it. he... I finally got to go to the new store after uh, everything finally opened back up. And the new store is great. It's in a nice parking lot area. Yep. like nice little plaza. Plenty of space to park. Big, much bigger store. Like, very open and spacious. And it's just super chill atmosphere. It's like yeah. everybody in there is super nice. Like, the best part about going to a store like that is... The people who go in, everybody just wants to be friendly. Nobody's, like, yeah. a jerk. Nope. It's, like, it's the best part of the collect game collecting hobby is, like, all in one place in a store like this. Yeah. I remember when we went, too, there was, like, um, this, um, I think it was, like, this grandparent and this kid, and he was, like, just starting to get into, like, collecting, like, games and stuff, mm-hmm. and it was just, like... Oh, it was just such a precious little moment of, like, them helping him find games and, like, picking out games that would be, like, fun for him. It was just, like, a really cute little moment so while we one were there. Of, one of my favorite moments was uh, back at the old store. Uh, parents were there with um, a couple of their younger kids, and they were looking around, like, as the parents were gamers, too, and the kids were getting into games. And one of the little kids walks up to me because I was just, I was there talking to John and browsing. I hadn't. I had stuff I was going to buy, but I hadn't bought it yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, he comes over and he starts talking to me about Mario. <laughs> and he's giving me the history of Mario oh, through his eyes. Oh, my God. And I'm just, like, listening. I'm like, oh, that's cool, buddy. And I'm just letting him go. I'm like, all right. Oh, that's so Did, precious. I, I didn't correct him at all. John's over there laughing because it was, it was so cute. Oh. It was so funny. And his parents were all like, "Oh, I'm sorry." His parents were all like, uh, "They were, they were like worried." They're like, "Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bother." I'm like, "Don't worry about yeah, it. He, like, he's just, yeah, he's just being friendly. He's just a cute little kid. Like, honestly, he's not screaming or crying. Like, this no. is great." Like, <laughs> he was ta- talking to me about Mario. Oh, that's so funny. precious. Oh. <laughs> no, I felt bad. I, th- I felt bad that the parents were were like worried. I was like, "No, I don't. I don't care. I'm, I'm not here to be a jerk." Yeah. Well, it's just you never know now, like especially well, yeah, I know, cause... you just never know. But aw, that's so cute. It was it was so funny. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, so that's become basically my main. Everybody in an, in the collecting scene always has that term, 
They're my me. local retro game store. Yep. To me, that is my local retro game store. Mm. But we but have I mean, explored we, a couple, like, um... We have. When I originally <laughs> In, moved to Connecticut, uh, after I graduated, I ended up finding one that was, like, right by my apartment, and then I took you there. Uh, yeah. In the decrepit mall. In the <laughs> decrepit mall. Uh, it's the most decrepit mall I've ever seen. It literally has a Target, a movie theater, a Bath and Body Works, I think a Walmart, and that's it. That's all it is. And then it's just, you walk around, and all the yeah, and tiles like are cracked, con- and it just... It looks like it's condemned. <laughs> it does, but it's literally just a Target and a retro game store. <laughs> yeah. State Line. Yeah. I believe it's called. And they, but, they're um, super... Every time we've been there, they've been super nice and oh, yeah. super great. They, po- they post on Instagram all the time. They look like they're, like, they're chill as hell. Yeah, but, and they uh, also survived I remember... the pandemic, so woohoo. Yep. I'm surprised that mall survived the pandemic, honestly. At Target. Target yeah, that's true. Kept it alive. But um, I remember because that was right before. Yeah, that was the first time I visited you, and mm-hmm. um, I found. We weren't going to conven- a convention that week, right? I no no, 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 no I think we you didn't. just I think you just came to visit. Just yeah, I think that was the first time because the second time I came down was when we went to uh, Retro, Retro World. World. Yeah. But um, I remember that because I found Popful Mail for the Sega CD. Yep. And I remember because it was like, I, I was like, oh, don't worry, I'm not going to spend too much. I won't spend any, that much money. And the first thing <laughs> I see is to spend wh- that much money. <laughs> well, the thing is, I wasn't, whenever I go into a game store, I always have the mentality of I don't want to spend a lot of money. Yep. And I have that mentality, so I'm not, when you go in with the mentality of spending all the money, you, you'll buy stuff before you see the thing that you actually want. Yeah. So I always have the mentality of I'm not going to spend a lot of money. So I'll look around and then I'll find the thing, like that thing. Yes. And it was Popful Mail, which is one of the the Sega CD games I was desperate for. Mhm. Because it's a very rare game, and it's it was one of the it was the last working designs game I needed for this my Sega CD collection. Yep. But they were super nice because I remember like a great sign of a game store is when they're like super personable. Mhm. Like, I was like, can I just look at the game? And they're like, yeah, sure. They pull it out. They're like, you can do whatever you want. Just don't leave the store with it without paying. <laughs> I was yep. like, okay. So I'm, like, checking the disc out, looking at it. Like, it was, it was pristine. Mm. So, I mean, it was it was two two fifty, which was actually a good deal. Mm. And I didn't regret it. I think I got that and then, like, one other thing. Mm. I remember. That was cool. And then we found a couple more, like, random game stores just in your area. Yeah. Well, I found one, and it was actually, like right up the street from my office um which is pretty cool and then we found a couple others and i remember yeah. the one with the owner who was just streaming the entire time we were there oh yeah that one was funny that one was really funny because he did not give a crap he was all like whatever he's just like i remember he, you went you went behind the counter by accident and he's all like i don't care dude look yeah. at, look at look <laughs> you can up. come back behind the counter <laughs> yeah he was a cool guy he was, so, he was oh. super friendly because yeah. you were all like you realized you were standing right behind the cash register you're like oh i'm sorry <laughs> I, I felt so bad but you know like how you just you start looking and you're like huh, huh, huh. and then you like well, look up the, and then you're just like oh no oh no how did i get here well it wasn't like blocked off or anything yeah. so you just kind of walked <laughs> I remember you were so embarrassed, and he was all like, "Nah, God. nah, don't worry." <laughs> Here, you your brother's—he was like, "He was like, your brother's giving me a lot of money. money. Don't worry." Because <laughs> oh. I, I bought, because I bought a that—that that was where I found my my pristine Fantasy Star Four. Yep, oh. that was great. And then we also there was that other the other one up the street from where you work. You were saying that one was yeah. that one was more chill because it was more like. That, it was more sterile, I guess you could say. Yeah, it wasn't as, like, I don't know. There's kind of this part of, like, retro game stores where you like to go. And it, it's kind of nice when it's a mess. Not, like, a mess, but, like, you know. Like, it's not super organized because it just makes it more fun. It's, like, your treasure yeah. hunting. And that one was just more, like, it was more set up like an actual game store. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it was still good. It was still fun. Well, yeah, because I found, I got the 2600 Junior there. Yeah. Which was really cool. But, yeah, it. It was cool. Oh, do you remember that retro store up the street from your college? Oh, yeah. That one time we just... It was like... That was more comics and stuff, right? It was like, comics, but it had a game... It had like a game portion, too. It also had yeah. like anime and stuff. Oh, Perfect I for wish, our podcast. <laughs> I know. I kind of want to like 
go back now because they could have had some One Piece merch. I bet they did. (laughs) I have a problem. As soon as we, Alex, as soon as we can go to the flea market again, we'll we'll go and find, see what we can find. Oh my god, I'm determined. Bill, we gotta go to the one in, uh, some in Connecticut because there's some Mm. pretty big ones here, so. We gotta plan it out. Yep, we'll plan. We can do a flea market adventures too. Yeah, we can do a podcast. (laughs) Podcast! (laughs) Among among many other podcasts that we will get to at some point. Oh yeah, I feel like we, like, went through this period of, like, not having any ideas, and then suddenly we both were just like... (gasps) Let's do this and this and this and this and this. So we got yeah. we got some ideas. We're, coming. we're we're good for a while now. Yeah. So. We good. But anyways, anyways, guys, yeah, that was pretty good talk. Interesting blast from the past. Oh yeah, I forgot about KB toys. <laughs> yeah. I forgot that existed. <laughs> yep. Oh boy. Well, anyways, guys, um, uh, the gaming collecting podcast is available on all your major podcasting platforms it is an anchor podcast and yeah well thank you for uh, joining us as we discuss the games that shaped us we'll see you all later see you later bye see you guys oh oh